Hello everybody, Zero Fossil Fuel, and what you see on the bench right now is pulse width modulator serial number 0002 under test and calibration, connected to my VSPB cell, and uh, showing the waveform on the oscilloscope. Also in, the four, uh, in front of the oscilloscope is uh, pulse width modulator serial number 14. Uh, I want to go over with you briefly the calibration procedure that I go through when I set these things up so that you have an understanding of how to use them when you get them. The cell that, that I have right now connected to the pulse width modulator is set up with an electrolyte concentration that draws 30 amps when cold from straight DC, no pulse width modulator. All right. This is an important factor that you need to remember when you're when you're connecting this to a cell. It's important to realize that e even though you can turn back the average current with the pulse width modulator, the peak current that the pulse width modulator is trying to put into the cell will be the amount of current that the cell would normally draw if all you did was apply straight DC to it. This is important because the peak current capability of the pulse width modulator is 250 amps while the average output is 75 amps max okay so what this means is I have the cell set up so that it draws 30 amps but I want it to I want to feed it 20 amps so it's going to feed a pulse width modulator uh, a pulse width uh, DC voltage at a 66% duty cycle, or 66% of 30 amps, which would be an average current of 20 amps. And you can see that if I zoom in on the power supply, and you get a look at the at the amp meter, it's showing 20 amps. All right. If I go over to the oscilloscope, it's showing a 66% duty cycle. Now, right now the scope is sweeping at 0.1 milliseconds per division, or one millisecond for an entire sweep. So if there was one pulse for an entire sweep, one at the beginning of the, at the sweep and one at the very end of the sweep, that would be 1,000 cycles per second. Because there are five pulses, that is 5,000 cycles per second is the frequency that I have this pulse width modulator set to right now. Now, as you can see, the uh, transient spikes are actually quite large, and this is because I don't have any external electrolytic capacitors connected across the 12 volt power input to the pulse width modulator. It will run without it. C5 right now has been tailored to 4.7 microfarad, 100 volt polystyrene. Uh, capacitor, polystyrene metal film capacitor. This is enough to keep the transients low enough to protect the power MOSFET, but I want to show you what happens when I connect the electrolytic capacitor, the bank of four 1000 microfarad low ESR capacitors across the input terminals. Now the scale on the, the vertical scale on the oscilloscope is set to 10 volts per division right now. Is that right? Yeah, 10 volts per division. So you can see that the spikes are rising to 30 volts. The MOSFET is capable of 50 volt or 55 volts transient, transient sp spikes, so that's not really a problem, but I want to show you how we create a margin of safety by adding the electrolytic capacitors. This is without, and that's with. Without, with. Okay, so you get an idea of how the electrolytic capacitor, the low impedance on the power input, helps the transient suppression diode clip the transients at the, at the maximum voltage going into the cell. Now I'm going to speed up the scope and I'm going to adjust the, the, the um, vertical scale a little bit so that we can zoom in a little bit and see exactly what's happening to this, to this uh, cell right now. Okay, this is uh, 10 microseconds per division, 5 microseconds, 2 microseconds. So now we've zoomed in on this spike, and I'm going to increase my vertical scale to f 5 volts per division instead of 10 volts per division, and really fill this scale, this uh, screen right up. So you can see, as the spike rises, it then starts to ring. Okay. 
The MOSFET conducts here, lets go here, rings a little more, and settles out. When I attach the electro electrolyte capacitor, you can see the top of the spike is now clipped and the amount of ringing that takes place is much less. This is actually helping the pulse width modulator to operate more efficiently. So while I won't be supplying the electrolytic capacitors with the pulse width modulators, I do recommend that you purchase some from Mauser or from whatever electronics distributor you use. Uh, put together a cluster of four electrolytic capacitors, 1000 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, wire them in parallel and put them close to the pulse width modulator so that the transient suppression diode internally can clip the transient voltages much more effectively. I'll give you a little close-up of what that looks like. Okay, there is my cluster of four electrolytic capacitors and they are wired in parallel. And then I have the wires just going over to the pulse width modulator circuit like that. All right, you get a good look at it, and you can see how the transient suppression diode is wired from the positive terminal coming in to the, dra the center drain terminal of the power MOSFET. All right, the drain terminal connects to the negative out, and the shunt wire connects from the source, the right-hand terminal on the power MOSFET, to the ground terminal inside the case. There is my 4.7 microfarad 100 volt polystyrene capacitor for the transient suppression internally and there is the etched and populated printed circuit board. You'll see I also have it marked inside which one is the percent duty cycle, the current, and the frequency adjustment. So there you have it. That's the tour of the zero fossil fuel current limiting pulse width modulator circuit.